So what we want to look at is dynamical systems. Dynamical systems of the form. So in this case, the form will be like this, will be AM plus one, uh, will be equal to R. In this case, R will be a constant times AN plus B. So we have, we have this type of dynamical system where, where R and B are constants. And we want exactly the same thing. So we want a, a exact solution for this type of problem uh, here. So this type of problem here, we want an exact solution of that. So we want, we want a closed formula, closed formula for the system. And then you will see why this is gonna be useful for an, another problem that we're gonna also look at it today. Now, before I give you the, the actual closed formula, I'm gonna write down a definition here. And this definition is gonna be important because it's gonna be related to the closed, closed formula of the dynamical system. So we say this, so a number and number A uh, is called an equilibrium. So an equilibrium value or fixed point. So fixed point of a dynamical system of a, I'm gonna just, just call it like this, uh, DS for dynamical system, if this happens, if AN is equal to that number A for all, for all the natural numbers, so for all the values of N. So for N equals, let's say one, two, and so on. So basically what is a fixed point is just a starting value of a dynamical system that's gonna make the dynamical system just stay the same value. So it never changes. So that's what a fixed point is or, or equilibrium value. So this A is gonna be the, the starting point, the A0, and then after that it just repeats over and over and over and over again, okay? Okay, let me give you let me give you an example here of what I mean by those by by the equilibrium. So I'm gonna look at an example here. So let me give you an example of actually there's three types of, of functions I'm gonna the dynamical systems we're gonna talk about here. So let's look at this dynamical system. This dynamical system number one. I'm gonna call it a DS1. And this dynamical system is gonna have uh, this recurrence formula, AM plus one uh, equals to 0 0.5 times AN plus uh, 0 0.1. Uh, that's the, this is, that is the recurrence formula, this one right here. And then we have, they say the initial condition A0 is gonna be 0.1, okay. Now that's the first dynamical system. I'm gonna look at another dynamical system, uh, number two, and I'm gonna call that one DS2, which is gonna have exactly the same recurrence formula. So it's gonna be AM plus one equals to 0 0.5 AN plus 0 0.1. And, but now the initial condition for that one is gonna be uh, 0 0.2. Okay. 
So they have exactly the same, exactly the same, the same uh, recurrence formula here, but, but the initial condition is different. And let me do one more. Let me do one more dynamical system here. So the third one is going to be, let me call it the S3. Uh, and exactly the same recurrence formula, AN plus 1 equals to 0 0.5 AN plus 0 0.1. And I'm going to change, in this case, the initial condition of that dynamical system. I'm going to call, I'm going to, uh, put it as 0.3. So we have three dynamical systems. All of them have the same recurrence formula, but they change only in the initial value. Now this recurrence formula that is here is, is like this, the one that we talked about at the beginning, this one here. So we have AM plus one equals to a constant times AM plus B. So that is the type of dynamical systems uh, we have here. So let me show you what this dynamical system do. Um, so I'm gonna show you this in, in Mathematica. So I'm gonna pull up this, uh, this is the notebook for Mathematica for this particular um, problem. So here I have the recurrence formula for the first dynamical system. Uh, the initial condition is 0.1 and I'm gonna do it from zero to 15. This is kind of arbitrary. I could put like 20 or something there. Exactly the same for the second one, which I'm calling L2. Same recurrence formula, different initial condition, exactly the same range, and exactly the same for the third one. Same recurrence formula, different initial condition. So let's see what the values of these things are, how much they change when you uh, run them. So for the first one, so we see here how they start. Of course, this starts at point 0.1 because that's the initial initial value. Let's look at the second one here. So for the second one, as you see here, what happens in the second one, right? This is a particular case. When you start the recurrence formula at point 0.2, this sequence just states at point 0.2. Right? So it's all the same. So this value, according to our definition, this value 0.2 is a fixed point of this, this recurrence formula. And let's look at the next one. So the next one is when we check, uh, we put the 8.0 as 0.3. So let's see that. And so this is what we get. Now, the reason I'm talking about this problem is the following. If I take all of these sequences, L1, L2, and L3, and I draw them together, let's see what happens. Okay. Now, this is the code for, for drawing three sequences. So it's again, list plot as we have seen before. So that uh, draws a list of points. I have three lists of points. So if you have to draw several of them, then you just put them like this. Now this part that is here is just to make it look pretty. That's all. Okay, you can just leave list plot without all of this. This is just to make it look a little bit better. That's just a way of presenting the 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 answer. Uh, and you can use this for your calculations as well. So you can see how this works. All right, so this is the the result that we get. So we have the this dynamical system, the first one, the second one, and the third one are all uh, plotted here. And so the reason I wanted to give you this example is because if you see the sequences, how they go or how they increase when, when N gets bigger, they are all going to this exactly the same value, which is 0.2, okay? So what does that mean? That all of these sequences that are here, once they reach point two, they're gonna stay exactly the same. Now that is not surprising for the second one because when you start at point two, and we see the computation, everything is point two. Now for the first one, 
it takes a little bit of time to go to point two, but let, let me do, for example, up to, let's say, uh, uh, 20. So if we do 20 values for this one, so it takes a little bit of time to go point two, but once it reaches point two, then it's gonna stay point two, and exactly the same happens for, for the third sequence here. So the idea here is that point two will be a fixed point of the dynamical system. So a fixed point of the dynamical system depends only on the recurrence formula. So once you have the recurrence formula, the fixed point depends on that only, on that formula alone. So let me go back to one note here. So that's the idea, the idea that that fixed point is gonna be point two, even though I have, we have different uh, initial values, we will have exactly the same the same uh, fixed point or equilibrium value of that dynamical system. Now, why is this important here for all for us? So let me just mention here from our calculation. So in this case, so in this case, uh, point two is an equilibrium. is an equilibrium of the dynamical system. Equilibrium value of all the systems of the dynamical uh, systems. Now the question is, how do we know that that point two is an equilibrium value? Because we cannot just take uh, let's say the dynamical, the recurrence formula here and I start checking which one is it. So the equilibrium value or the fixed point is gonna be, can be computed using only the recurrence formula. And so this is the second part, uh, the second theorem we're gonna see in class, which is how to find the, the fixed points or the equilibrium values. So this is gonna be uh, theorem two. So theorem two, so the equilibrium uh, value of the uh, dynamical system, which is the one we are looking at here, this AM plus one equals to R times AN plus B. So the equilibrium value of that dynamical system is so there are three different answers depending on what r and b are so if if the number r here which is a constant if that number is not equal to one then the equilibrium of value is gonna be equal to the constant B divided by one minus R. So this part here, this the equilibrium value B or one minus R is 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 the fixed point of this of this dynamical system. And what that means is that if I have a zero equal to this number, then this sequence will just be this number over and over and over again. So if, what happens if R is equal to one? So in that case, if R is equal to one and B is equal to zero, every number, every real number is an equilibrium value. So when you have R, R equals one, and B equals zero. So in this here, in this uh, recurrence formula, R is one and B is zero, then any number is gonna be an equilibrium value or a fixed number. So it's not very interesting if you have that situation. Now the third one, the third part, is what happens if, if R is equal to one and B is not equal to zero. So if that is the case, 
then no equilibrium value, no equilibrium value exists. So sometimes this dynamical system will not have an equilibrium value when you have this case, uh, the case uh, R equals one and, and B equals zero. In that, in that case, we won't have an equilibrium value for, for, that, for that system. So some dynamical system will not have equilibrium values when R is one and B is not equal to zero. That would be the case. And this covers all the cases. So if you think about R and B, the possibilities, well, R could be either one or could not, or could not be one. And B could either be zero or could not be zero. So in any case, we are, we are covering all the cases with this, with this part here. Okay, let's, let me go back and apply this theorem here to the dynamical systems we had here. So as I mentioned, this dynamical system, the, the equilibrium value is 0 0.2. It, it depends only on the, on the recurrence formula. So let's, let's look at that example here. So let me look at the example here. Example, find the an equilibrium value, an equilibrium value, if any, of, of the dynamical system that we had uh, above, which is AF, AF plus one equals to 0 0.5 AN plus 0 0.1. Uh, we don't need a zero because the equilibrium value only depends on the on the recurrence formula here. And the reason we are talking about equilibrium value is because that's gonna be part of the closed formula for the for these dynamical systems here. So what do we have in this in this case? So what we have in this case is the coefficient of a n is what we are calling r and the constant is what we are calling B. So R is 0.5 and B is 0.1. So if we go back to the theorem, so let me scroll up here to the theorem, that will be case number one, right? So in this case, R is 0.5, so R is not equal to one. So that follows under this case, case number one. So the equilibrium value is given by this formula so let's put the equilibrium value here. So the, the equilibrium uh, value will be equal, so it's always equal to B over one minus R. So in this case, it's gonna be 0.1 divided by one minus the value of R here, which is 0.5. So this is gonna be 0.5 so that's gonna be 0.1 divided by 0.5. And then if you do that computation or you simplify all of this, then that's gonna give you a 0.2, which is what we knew from, from Mathematica. So we knew 0.2 is an, is an equilibrium value for, for this dynamical system that is here. All right, so this value that is here is gonna show up in our closed formula for the dynamical system. So let me, let me write down uh, the theorem here. So let's look at the theorem. So the theorem is gonna tell me what is the closed formula for the dynamical system. So let's say this, uh, the solution, so the solution of the uh, dynamical system uh, AM plus one equals to R times AN plus B when R is not equal to one, the solution of the dynamical system is gonna be this closed formula. And this is where we are looking for. So this is a n, it's gonna be equal r to the n times c, 
So this is the multiplication sign plus B over one minus R. So this last part that is here, B uh, over one minus R, this is the equilibrium. The equilibrium with the system, which is basically, uh, remember is if you take this as an initial value, this uh, recurrence formula will always give you this value here. So this is gonna be the closed formula. Now there is something here that we don't know. R and B are given to us because we know what the recurrence formula is, but this C is not something that we know from here. Now, this is uh, for this theorem. So what let me see is this. So for, let me write this down. So for some constant, constant C that depends So that constant C is gonna depends on the initial condition. Now, I'm not saying that this constant C is exactly the initial condition. It's just that it depends on it. So it's some expression C is some constant that depends on the initial condition A0. For that, for that recurrence formula here. All right, so let's actually use this to solve some practical problems. So that this is, I'll, I will give you a minute to write it down and then we will, we will solve it. Uh, okay, let me read uh, what it says. So, so we have an annuity that pays 1% monthly interest with a withdrawal of $1,000. Uh, how much money do we need as initial investment to deplete the, annu the annuity in 20 years? Um, so what we need to actually find here is the initial condition. So let's, let's look at, at the solution here. So solution. Okay, so we, so we want to find We want to find uh, the initial condition A0. So we need to know what that is, where, where AN is equal to the money in the, in the annuity at the end of the nth month. of the end month. So AN will be the money we have in, in that annuity of the end of end month. And we have to know what, what is the initial amount there. What we want is uh, we wanna withdraw $1,000 every month. And at the end of 20 years, we want that to be depleted. So we want that to be zero basically. So at the end of 20 years, that's it. That's the last thing we, uh, we withdraw. I want you to get the formula for this. So the general idea is that we have AN plus one equals to AN plus delta of AN. So that's what we are working on. So I will give you a couple of minutes and then you tell me what is the exact uh, thing here without the delta N of course. Remember delta L here has to be in terms of uh, AN. So work on it for a couple of minutes and then we will double check. So this is an important formula that we have. And let's write down, let's go back to the statement of the problem and see what the problem is saying. So what we have is uh, we need to find the initial amount of money and we wanna deplete the annuity in 20 years. So we want, let me write it down actually. So we want so we want to find to find a zero uh, such that such that uh, in twenty years 
So in 20 years, there is no money in the annuity. Okay, so we have to actually translate all of this here in some type of equation that we can actually uh, uh, use. Now, we don't know A0, and that is exactly what we are looking for. But this part that is here, that in 20 years, there is no money in the annuity, right? So after 20 years, AN should be zero. Now, we are measuring N here in months because that's what we are doing here, right? The AN is the money in the annuity at the end of the, at the end of the nth month. So, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, what is uh, 20 years in months? Two hundred and forty. Exactly, two hundred and forty. So, from here, what do we want? We want the a of two hundred and forty. We want that equal to what? Zero. Say that again. What do we want zero. this? E zero, right? So we want this equal to be equal to zero. Okay, so this is what we are working with. So this is another piece of, of, of information that we have. We, we have that A of 240 needs to be zero and we have the recordance formula. Now, as it is right now, if I have to do this with Mathematica, I have to do trial and error, but we, won't, we don't wanna do that. What we wanna do is use the closed formula that we have. So let me write down the recurrence formula again. So we have A n plus one, I'm going to write it down here. AN plus 1 equals to 1.01 AN minus 1,000. So here, this is in our theorem. This is our R. And this whole thing here is our B. We want the closed formula for, for, this, for this dynamical system here. So that's what we want, the closed formula for this one. Now, to find the, fro the closed formula, we need to find the equilibrium value. So what was the equilibrium value of, in general, what is the formula from the theorem? B over one minus R. Right, B over one minus R. And so the closed formula is The closed formula is this uh, a n equals uh, this is from the theorem r to the n times a constant plus plus this equilibrium value that we have here so it's plus b over one minus r okay so in this case we have the value of r and we also have the value of B, so we can go ahead and replace here uh, what we know. So we have A N equals R. In this case, this R that is here is 1.1. So this is going to give us a 1.01 to the N times the constant C plus, and then we just have to replace here the values of B and R. B is negative 1,000. So that's going to give us negative 1,000 here. And this is all divided by 1 minus 1.01. So this is the closed formula uh, for that system. Now we are looking for A0. Now A0, we could get it if we put the 0 here, but the problem is we don't know what C is. So that's the problem. Now, but we haven't used a piece of information that was given to us. The piece of information that I was given to us is this one. A of 240 is equal to zero. So let's use that in this formula to find this constant uh, C. 
So let me write that down. We also know that A of 240 is equal to zero. So what that means here is this, if I replace N in this formula by 240, this whole thing here is gonna give me zero. So I'm gonna write that down. So I'm gonna actually combine this one with the one that is here above. So let's do that. So that means that zero is equal to 1.01 .01 to what power? Uh, times C, which is the constant we don't know, plus the 100,000 uh, that we have here. So from here, then uh, it will be possible to solve for, for C, okay? So let's solve for C here. Solve for the constant C. So basically you just subtract 100,000 on both sides and divide by this, by this power. So, so if we do that, then C will be equal uh, to negative uh, 100,000 all divided by 1.01 to the 240. So let's simplify this a little bit more. So the C here, now if we put this in, in your calculator uh, or do it in Mathematica, it's gonna give you minus uh, 9,180 point uh, 58, so that would be the value of C. So now this is C, I'm gonna put it into my uh, closed formula that is here. So let's put that into the closed formula. So if we put into the closed formula, so let me write down into the closed formula. So then AN will be equal to 1.01 .01 to the N uh, times this constant C, so times that uh, negative 9,180.58, and that's plus 100,000, plus 100,000. So this will be uh, the solution of our dynamical system. Uh, are we done? Is it the answer? We wanted to find, let's see, let's go back here, right? So let's go back all the way here. We wanted to find a zero, right? So, uh, yes. Yeah, so how much money do we need as initial investment? That would be the A zero, right? So we're looking for, for A0. Okay, so now that we have the formula completely here, then we can actually go ahead and compute A0. So A0, A let me use uh, white color here. So A0 is gonna be equal to 1.01 .01 to the zero power, uh, multiplies this number uh, plus 100,000. Um, this expression 1.01 .01 to the zero, that's just equal to one. So basically what you have here is 100,000 uh, minus, minus this number. So if you do that computation, so a zero will be approximately equal to uh, 90,819. Uh, is that correct, 0.4? Somebody double check that for me, please. Okay, so now what we have here, so let's properly answer the question because this is an application problem. So let me scroll all the way up here to, so what was the question? The question is how much money do we need as initial investment to deplete the annuity in 20 years? So if you want to, uh, take money every month, $1,000 with an interest of 1% per month, then you have to have an initial investment of this much money. So, so let, let's answer that. So the initial investment, 
So the initial investment should be uh, that much money, $90,819.4. Let, let me emphasize one more point before I move on. And is this, if you had to solve this problem using this recurrence formula here, they will, that will be more difficult. So if you put this in Mathematica, you can maybe figure it out, but you have to do a lot of trial and error if you use the recurrence formula. But because we are using the closed formula, in this case, the closed formula allow us to solve this problem exactly. So we don't have to actually guess or do trial and error so we can solve that exactly. Okay, so this is the last thing we're gonna do for today. Uh, I'm going to move into section 1.4. I promise I'm going to cover section 1.2 uh, at, at some point. Uh, that is approximations. We, we will do it. But I wanted to do this because it's also uh, related to what we are doing here. Uh, uh, this is systems of difference equations. So if you go put the, to the book, uh, you're gonna see that uh, that's exactly what we are doing. So 1.4 is system of difference equations. So, so let me write down first the definition. So a system of different difference equations in the sequences So we're going to have two sequences. One of the sequences is going to be the sequence of the ANs. So it's a sequence of uh, numbers, label AN. And we have another sequence, uh, BN, has the form. So you're gonna, it's going to have this form. So when we had only one difference equation, uh, that means we only have one recurrence formula. In this case, we're gonna have two recurrence formula and both of them are gonna involve both the sequence AN and the sequence BN. So one recurrence formula is gonna look like this, AN plus one equals to some function F of the sequences AN and, and BN. Now this function here is just saying, it's just an expression that contains both an and bn. So some expression like could be an squared plus bn squared minus two or something like that, or some other expression. But it's some expression that contains an and bn. And then we're gonna have another uh, recurrence formula bn, which is another function g that also depends on the sequences a n and b n. So in this case, oh, what we are having here is two recurrence formulas and a n and b n, they are both mixed here in both recurrence formulas. So a better way to say that is, so we say that the sequences are interrelated. So the sequences are inter related. So that means, that basically means that one sequence affects the other and, and so on. Okay, let me give you a, a couple of examples here with, with th this type of uh, dynamical system. So let me give you an example. So an example here is something like you can have a a system here of dynamical systems, something like, for example, a n plus one equals to, for example, two a n minus b n. So here in this in this recurrence formula, b n also appears there, and then have to I have an I'm gonna have another one, b n plus one, which is, for example, a n minus five. BN. And you can have constants here and it could be more complicated, but then 
but this is just an example. So the sequences A n and B n are more are uh, interrelated. Okay, and then you will have to have some some uh, initial condition. Now, when we had one recurrence formula, we had one initial condition. Uh, well, how many initial conditions do you think we should have here too? So we'll have an initial condition for A0 and another one for B0. So this is just an example. I'm just making up numbers here. So let's say for example, one in zero. So here what we have is in this two, these are two recurrence relations. And then we have two initial conditions. We are gonna use this again to solve some, some problems, some real life problems. So there will be problems uh, where we have to uh, use this type of uh, model to solve the problem. So, so let me just make a, a comment here. So to solve, to find, so let's say you have to find, let's say a one, a two and so on, or B one, B two and so on. If you have to find these values, you need both sequences. So we need to use both sequences to use uh, both uh, sequences. Okay, let's just for an example, let's try to find in this particular example, let's try to find, for example, we already know what A0 is. A0 is, uh, is one, that's the initial condition, that's A0. Now let's try to find A1. So how should I find A1? Correct, exactly. Let's just plug it here, right? So A1, so A1 will be two A0 minus B0, right? So two A0 minus B0, okay? So in this case, uh, so what we have is, okay, so let's go back, it's A0 is one, so it's gonna be two times one, two times one uh, minus B0, which is zero. So basically what we are getting here is that A1 is two. So A1 is two. Okay, how about, let's, let me do one more and we'll stop there. So how about, uh, how do we find A2? What should be the A2? To A1 minus B1. Uh, do we have A1? Yeah, but we don't have exactly, we don't have B1. So if we don't have B1, we actually have to go and find B1. So here, uh, A1, we know what that is, but this one, we need to find it. So, so how do we find B1? So that one will be, uh, so B1 uh, will be equal, let's look at it. So it's gonna be A, it's gonna be what A? A0? minus five, B zero. So in this case, we can find what B one is. So B one will be A zero, which is one minus five times B zero, which is zero. So B one will be uh, one. So now we are ready to take this and plug it there and we get our value of A two. Okay, this is, uh, this is kind of tedious to do it by hand. Mathematica also can handle this type of recurrence formula. So you have a, a system of uh, difference equations. Mathematica can do that also with exactly the same thing. So let me go back here, uh, here and one of the things you should always get used to is uh, looking for help here in the mathematical help. So if you say a recurrence table, and you look at the help for the recurrence table here, the recurrence table had the regular 
dynamical system, which is just one of them. Or here, if you look at here at the example, we have a, a recurrence table with two uh, sequences. One of them is the Xn, and the other one is the Yn. So here, you have both uh, recurrence relations involving Xn and Yn, and then you have two initial conditions for X0 and Y0. And this is the way you you write it down like this. So this is just gonna give you the, the, the sequence here, as many as you put it over here, okay? So Mathematica is also good for doing those type of things. So you, you can also handle this type of systems of difference equations.